Okay, I'm gonna make this video. I've had some people asking about the process, like on the Star Lab, going from designing something in Inkscape, pulling it into Sheet Cam, applying a cut process, and then opening it in Command CNC to actually cut it out. So, this probably isn't gonna be a super short video, but we'll just run through it real quick, as quick as I can. First thing we'll do in Inkscape, I'm going to import a drawing. I'm going to import one deliberately that I know I can cause a few problems with just for showing that in Inkscape or in Sheet Cam, I mean. Okay, so I'm importing it. Click OK. So I've got this image here. You just got your new plasma table. You're wanting to cut something out. I pulled in this PNG image, and I'm gonna go up here to go to path, trace bitmap, and then this window's gonna pop up. I always click this box right here. Hopefully you can see that. I'm taking this with my phone, but I'm gonna click that box. That gives me a live preview of what the trace is gonna look like. Then I normally adjust the brightness cutoff up a little on a black and white photo. And you can also go into options and adjust this optimized paths up a little bit. That'll reduce the number of nodes that the trace produces. So after I've got my settings what I want, I hit OK. It doesn't look like anything happened, but now if I click on this, you can see I have, this is a path on top. Here's my image on bottom. So now I can delete the image. Don't need it anymore. And I've got my path here. So, just to show what happens if you make an error, I'm not gonna fix a few obvious problems I know this is gonna have, but I'm just going to file, save as, call it flowers. I'll pick a folder to save it in. I'm just gonna save it in this Clipart 2 folder. Okay, now I've got a SVG named Flowers saved in my folder. So I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna leave this window open, but just minimize it. And jump over to Sheet Cam. Now in Sheet Cam, I'm gonna go to File, Import Drawing. And then I'm going to find my folder, Clip Art 2. Select SVG, because that's the type of file I'm importing. And you can do, in a cheat cam, you can import an SVG, DXF, and a few other file types. I only use SVG and DXF, so I'm gonna select SVG. And I'll scroll down and find that flowers SVG. This should be it, and hit open. Then it's gonna ask me how I wanna scale this. If it were a DXF, I'd select a different option here, but on an SVG, I'm gonna click on that and set that at one to one. Otherwise, it's gonna bring it in really big. So I'm gonna set a one-to-one -one ratio for an SVG and hit OK. It's gonna always run through this little dialogue here, removing duplicate vectors. Generally, that doesn't cause any kind of problem. It can take different amounts of time on different drawings, depending on how complicated it is. When it's done running this little thing here, it'll open my drawing up. This one's taking an unusual amount of time. Normally, it does not take that long. There we go. And there we see we have the drawing. We just pulled it in. It's got a path. Should be good to go. Well, the first, that first problem here is you should have red for outside contours and yellow for inside contours. If you've got red contours inside of yellow contours, you have a problem because what's going to happen is it's going to cut this out and then it's going to cut this out and that's going to fall out. You're going to lose all your detail there. So I did that on purpose just to show what would happen or how to identify you have a problem in sheet cam. You know, these flowers on the inside should look just like this lower left flower here. It should all be yellow. If you've got red inside of yellow, you, you've got an error in your drawing. That's a good way if you double check your drawing when you bring it in to catch issues like where you forgot to bridge a letter, something like that. You see a red 
center inside of an R or a D or an A, well, you didn't bridge it and it's going to fall out. You're going to lose your detail. So I'll switch back over to Inkscape. And to fix something like that, it'd be pretty easy. I'll just hit on this drawing. I'll select it and hit Shift-Control-K. I'll break it apart. I'll unselect. It's kind of hard to see them. But I'm going to click in the middle there. Ah, that didn't work. There we go. And unselect those center pieces. And I'm going to hit Control K. It doesn't look like anything's happened, but what's happened is I've detached these center pieces. So now I'll move it to a position where, you know, maybe something like that. Uh, it's not going to cooperate real well. But I'll move it somewhere like that. Move this somewhere like this. I'll just, it's going to probably produce a few errors too but I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it just to show you a few other problems probably in sheet cam. So I've got that moved where that's gonna bridge to that. This here is gonna bridge here and here. So I'm gonna select both of those by holding shift and clicking both of them. Hit shift control plus, union those together. And then I'm gonna select the main body of this design by holding shift and clicking it, shift control plus. And now I'm gonna zoom out and I'm going to save this again. I'm just gonna hit save this time because I've already saved the file so it'll just override it. Now I'll go back to sheet cam. I could delete this, just right click it and delete it. Or you can just file import drawing. If you import drawing without selecting new part, it will basically replace the last drawing that you brought in. So I'm gonna import it again. There's flowers, open, one to one. see the centers are yellow inside of the red shouldn't be any problems in theory now the next thing I'm gonna do I've got my drawing I brought it in I don't see any errors here I'm gonna go up to operation plasma cut and then I'm gonna apply my plasma operation now when you go into this window I generally always run an outside offset but you can pick outside offset inside offset no offset I always run an outside offset on my drawings. So I select outside offset and I'm gonna select the layer that's white. That's gonna be for that SVG. It can, it can have different names for the layer. You just select whatever's there basically. That's what you wanna apply the operation to. <coughs> then you select the tool you wanna run. I'm gonna be cutting in 16 gauge steel. So this is the tool I wanna run. If you wanted to cut with a different process you've got all these different options you can scroll down through find the set the the material you're cutting and the amperage you want to cut it at and you select that tool but i'm cutting 16 gauge steel so i'm leaving that you can apply path rules here different rules i i normally only run a rule for holes just to slow down a little on holes okay then you can come down you can set your lead in length what type of lead in you want what type of lead out I generally don't run a lead out on artwork. I do run a lead in. Then I hit OK, and that's gonna apply the plasma cut operation to this drawing. Now, what you got here, I think I've actually got on this machine, I've got another rule set for small shapes. So a shape under a certain size, it's gonna slow down automatically. And this contour here, this contour here under that size limit. So it's indicating that that's gonna apply a rule there with the light blue color. The greens is just gonna be a standard cut. There's no rule being applied on those green cuts. So actually I thought I would end up with some errors here, but apparently the drawing was big enough. When you bring one in, you apply a plasma operation. Sometimes you don't wanna look at it. 
because you'll have spots like, like this here. This could have been too tight where the kerf wouldn't fit. So then you're going to see it's actually going to come over and it's going to stop and loop back and it's not going to complete the cut in a small section. But this, surprisingly, it came close here to being too tight, but it's going to pass. But, let's see. You're going to want to look it over make sure there aren't any errors you didn't catch in your drawing and there's not any issues like what I'm talking about. Um, this actually looks like it would cut, surprisingly, because we're as fast as I did it. But, let's just say, for argument's sake, I'm going to go back to the drawing in Inkscape and just show you what it would look like if I did have an error there. So I'm going to grab, I'm going to go to my node editor, click on it, and I'm going to grab one of these nodes here, and I'm just going to drag it over where I know it's going to be too tight and it's going to cause a problem. So there we go. That's that. There's no way the plasma curve is going to fit through there. Now I'm going to say file, save again, jump back over to sheet cam, and like I say, you don't have to delete this. If you're importing, it'll it'll overwrite this one. I'm gonna hit file, import drawing, flowers again, open it up. And because I didn't delete this and there's already an operation applied to it, when it brings it in, it's still gonna have that operation applied to this drawing. So we'll give that a minute, let that come in. never seen such a simple drawing take so long to import, but <laughs> of course the one I use for a video is going to take forever. There it goes. It's coming in and now we should have an issue here. This is what I meant. You come in here, you see that's actually turned this one cut into two separate cuts because that curve can't fit through there. So you want to check for spots like these on your drawings when you're applying your plasma cut. If you've got something like that, that tells you that contour is too tight, you can jump back over to your drawing program, which mine's Inkscape, and adjust this to where a plasma curve will fit through here. But other than that, let's just say I don't even, I don't care about that. I'm gonna go ahead and send this to the cutter. Um, something else that you commonly will use in here is you've got sheet cams gone through and put its start points where it wants them, where it thinks they need to be. If you want to adjust your start points, you don't like the order, maybe you want to rearrange the order because you know, you're know you trying to, to spread out the heat and keep it from warping, or I've had probably the most common reason I move a start point is I have this drawing and I have another one nested above it and the start point's gonna run into the other drawing you can edit your start points by coming up here in the top toolbar. I don't know how easy that is to see, but you click on that. And then now I can come in here and I can move these start points. Like this one here is right on that contour. I can move it down here and click wherever I move around. I don't know how well you can see that, but that start points following my cursor. If I click, it's moving that start point to that position. If you wanted to rearrange them, you can right click and do quick cut sequence. And then it's gonna start on number one and say, oh, this is number two right now. If I want that to be number one, I click there. It's gonna tell me that, you know, the operation is set to automatically optimize, optimize paths, changing the order will disable optimization. Do you wanna continue? Hit yes. Now I've changed that to number one. Now when I come down here, uh, there's not very many start points on this drawing, but I come down to here. That's going to be number two. I come over here, make that number three. You can rearrange them however you want. And when you're done, you just right click in sequence and now you're out of that editing mode. But anyway, just a couple things there. Um, if I were nesting here, I'm not nesting on this drawing, obviously, but let me turn the cut off so you can see it. Uh, if I were gonna nest, you come up here to this little cross arrow looking icon. It says nesting when you hover over it, you click on that. Now it's gonna turn white. That lets you know you're in nesting mode. And then if I wanted to cut multiple of these, I can right click, hit multiple duplicate, 
and it, as you see it pops up another I can drop drop a couple of these however I want when you're done same as the same as the start point editing editing you right click and hit uh, cancel and that will stop you can also right click if you just if you just want one duplicate you can just select duplicate and it will only do one after you drop it it won't make another one and you can work your way around the sheet setting those wherever you want if you click on them and hit your arrow buttons it will rotate it or you can come down at the bottom you can adjust your coordinates down here like say on this particular drawing i want that to be on the edge of the sheet not up here rather than trying to bump it around i can just go to the y coordinate enter zero hit enter and now that's dropped down to the edge of the sheet I uh, can't really think of much else really relevant there. So let's just say that's that's how I want to do that. I can put my, turn my, I'll go back out of nesting, turn my cut operation back on. Now, because these are duplicates, it automatically is going to apply the cut operation to all the duplicates. So I don't have to go in and reapply the cut operation to each duplicate. Each new drawing you bring in, you'll have to apply a separate cut operation. And if you bring in a new part, like say in this particular instance, I wanna bring in a new one, you would go to file, new part. Don't go to file, import drawing. If you do that, it will replace the last drawing you brought in. So always go to new part if you're bringing in multiple parts. But anyway, now I've got that. Let's say that's how I wanted it nested. I've got my plasma cut operation applied. I will go up to file, run post processor, and then I will, that will bring up the folder I save all my tap files in. It's called flowers tap. I'm just gonna leave that, hit save. Okay, now it's run the post processor. You can see all the, the cuts have been processed, hit okay. Then you can close out of sheet cam, go to command CNC. When you open command CNC, it's always gonna come up with e-stop activated, so you just, Hit that button, turn the e-stop off. Normally, if you first turn the machine on, you're also going to hit home X, home Y. That's going to run the X and Y coordinates to the home position. Once they've reached the home position, hit the home switches. If your machine has home switches, you can zero X, zero Y. And then you're ready to start your, start your cut. Now, as you can see here, I don't have a drawing, so I'm going to go to open, go to desktop, I go to my tap file folder, and then you scroll down through all your tap files. I've got a mess on here. And you find the one you just made, there's flowers tap. Hit open, and that's gonna bring that drawing in. And then once you've got it in, you've got everything set. There's really not much, generally when I turn it on, there's not much to do here. Just import a drawing. At first I home it, zero everything where I want it and then bring my drawing in. And then when I'm ready, I hit run and resume and it'll take off. I'm not, I'm not gonna actually cut this, but I'll turn the DTHC off and the disable torch function off. That'll let me run it without actually cutting. So I would hit run. It's gonna come up this splash screen, giving me a minute to check my settings, make sure everything looks like it's loaded right from the G code. I'm going to hit OK. After I hit OK, I hit resume, and that baby's going to take off cutting. So that's basically running through from making a drawing, applying the cut operation in sheet cam, opening that up in command CNC, and starting your cut. Hopefully that helps some people out, some new guys that are a little curious about the workflow process on a Linux-based command CNC unit. Bye.